welcome to this year's first edition of NBC News. In today's broadcast, our reporters are bringing you the news making headlines here at MHS. Now hopefully everyone has settled in and adjusted to this new school year. But with a new year brings new changes. And one of those changes has sparked a lot of controversy amongst the student body. That being our new hand dryers. But is this really a bad thing? Paige Meyer brings you the story. In an effort to go green, MHS has replaced our beloved paper towels with hand dryers. According to high school principal Mindy McCarty Stewart, this change was made for the better. I think it's uh, an opportunity to go green, and I'm probably thinking that we're People are getting sick of cleaning up the paper towels in the bathroom, too. A big problem with these new installations is the drying time has not increased, causing students to miss out on the hand washing experience. MHS teachers Carol Lehman and Maggie Long gave us their biological perspective on how germs spread in the bathroom. See, the real issue you have to think about is when toilets automatically flush. Fecal matter can fly six feet from the toilet, so it's everywhere. It's everywhere around you. The big thing is, is like Ms. Lehman said, is when you use the soap, the soap actually traps the dirt or the bacteria or whatever. So as long as you're using soap and you rinse that soap away, all the bacteria goes with it. And all that dust and microbe and that nasty germy stuff goes right down the sink. So in the end, use soap. There are those that love this ancient device and there are those that despise its deafening roar. But all of Mason High School can agree, these new hand dryers are better than nothing. I'm Paige Meyer, NBC News. Study, study, study. Those words haunt us each and every single night. And whether you study alone or in a group, it is one of the most boring and tedious of tasks. But the junior class here at MHS have been using Facebook as a way to help each other throughout the year. Caitlin Emter has the story. Students spend hours on homework every night, and as their classes get harder, their hours get longer. But some Mason students have decided to take advantage of one of the most popular social networking sites to hopefully cut those long hours in half. Allison Yan, the founder of the Junior Study Buddies Facebook group, has managed to tie classroom discussion to the relaxed conversation of the comment box. I originally just added like maybe 10 or 15 of my friends and their friends and we just started posting questions about like the April summer assignment and then stuff like that. And then once the school year started, it kind of grew as more people were added. Like I forgot I had to add like maybe five people of my five of my other friends, so they were added. And then eventually it became more than just A-Push. It also became like honors English, bio B, chemistry. And then more, as more and more people joined, there were more, more and more people that were like in different classes. So different classes were represented and then got bigger and bigger and it just went like that. Although students definitely can't bank on less homework each night, it's clear they don't have to go through it alone. With the Junior Study Buddies group at over 100 members, those who share classes at MHS can find the help they need by using Facebook to do their homework. I'm Caitlin Emter, NBC News. It's clear that our generation is all about social networking. From Facebook to Twitter, it seems that teachers are starting to get into it as well. With more teachers getting Twitters, it's putting some students on edge but they aren't on there for the same reasons that you are. Here's Winnie Bowles with the story. The little blue bird that appears as an icon is a major part in a teenager's daily life. It has often been perceived as a negative in a school setting. Others may agree to disagree. Though the school's acceptance is on its way, the benefits of working with students' daily lives and putting an educational use to it has allowed for a change in feelings towards using Twitter. So teachers here at MHS are beginning to use Twitter to communicate, inform, and help motivate their students. Mason High School English teacher Kristen Stoll uses Twitter to encourage and send out positive notes to her students. Miss Gentine is actually the, another teacher that's using Twitter um, that teaches 10th grade with me this year. And the two of us kind of had a conversation about using Twitter as she started it, using it earlier in the summer. And then we decided that it was something that we were both willing to try with our classes and kind of roll out this year. So we use it to communicate um, homework, other things that are going on in our classroom. Stoll puts a lot of effort into how she handles her Twitter account, making sure not only her students know she is on social media, but parents as well. The parents actually uh, received a, a letter home saying we will be using it 
and then they had to sign off just saying that they were acknowledging that it was something that was available and that they could follow us as well if they wanted to. Unlike Stoll, Mason High School math teacher and varsity girls soccer coach Andy Schur uses Twitter differently. Coach Schur found reaching out to his students via Twitter would be a great way to connect with his players. Um, I use it to keep the girls in the soccer program up to date on certain scheduling events that are going to happen. Uh, I tweet results about games, I tweet college commitments occasionally, uh, just general information for the girls in the soccer program and it's kind of grown into the soccer community a little bit, follows it as well, so it's a nice way to stay connected with the community. With today's society shifting more towards social media, it seems that overall the spark with Twitter amongst the teachers here at MHS has developed into a new trend. Whether their tweets are dedicated to classwork, motivation, or athletics, they all aim to do the same thing, which is to help their students. I'm Winnie Bowles, NBC News. Even though spring sports haven't begun yet, the Mason baseball teams have been working with a league that incorporates a buddy system to help teach those who don't normally get the chance to play and give them a one-on-one -on -one experience with America's favorite pastime. Here's Kevin Carey with the story. The Challenger Division is a league where special athletes can choose a buddy to help learn the fundamentals of baseball. But creating such a league isn't all fun and games. According to league director Susan Murdoch and head varsity coach Kurt Bly, it's about giving the kids a chance to play the game that's meant for all to enjoy and experience the magic baseball produces. They don't care who's winning or losing. It's all about having fun. So you will see kids running down from home plate to first base and they'll get there and the first baseman will give their friend a hug for having a good hit. So it's just everyone's happy just to be out there playing. We just recently found out that there was an opportunity for our program as well as the softball program to help serve in this capacity. And it's, I mean, it's the kids, you know, giving giving um, every child an opportunity to play the, play the game and have fun playing the game. I mean, that's why all of us you know, get involved in athletics is because it's fun. Not only does a league leave lasting memories on the players, but even bigger impressions on the buddies. According to senior Chris Martin and seventh grader Angie McKee, being a buddy isn't just about teaching baseball, it's about something more. I think it lets you see the game in a whole new light and um, lets you kind of share the game with people who don't normally get to experience it. And, um, I mean, seeing it, that it makes their day that much better and that they get to come out here for a couple weeks um, really is great because they get to work on their skills and they get to see what it's like playing baseball. And it's just a lot of fun to help them out. I mean, these kids are having a blast playing. And I think, I mean, it's probably how everything should be played, whether it's baseball or whatever you do. Just have fun doing it because um, any moment and maybe you're not able to, and when you're able to, just make the most out of your moments. The thing that's special about this is that we get to, the chance to help out people that aren't maybe as lucky as we are because um, like, yeah, because we have the ability to do other things. Take advantage of what we have already and not just be greedy and stuff. Every Friday in September, the Mason Challenger League fills Cattell Park with excitement, cheers, and hugs by parents, athletes, and spectators alike. What may not seem like a big deal to some, Memories that last a lifetime are created for the kids, and that's what truly makes this event a special and memorable experience, showing that no matter the stipulation, anyone can enjoy the game that is baseball. I'm Kevin Carey, NBC News. Freshmen, no offense or anything, but you usually go under the radar. So to hear that some have made varsity teams, it's not only a major accomplishment, but a huge responsibility. But for the freshmen on the golf and tennis teams, so far they've handled it pretty well. Here's Javier Valbar with the story. Making a varsity team is considered one of the most prestigious achievements in high school sports. The upperclassmen have a tendency to dominate in this field of athletics. But this year, several freshmen have stepped up to play lead roles alongside their veteran players. In tennis and golf, students who were in middle school not four months ago have been holding themselves to the same standards as the seniors and in some cases, exceeding them. Justin Kim currently has the second lowest average on the varsity golf team. Clearly, the transition from middle school to high school is not affecting him. The team itself is really encouraging, so I feel like the difference, is, the difference between middle school and high school is not that different team-wise, but it's way more t competitive. The conditions are way more different. 
the courses are longer and the atmosphere has totally changed because in middle school it's more, way more laid back but in high school it's it's a very serious atmosphere but freshmen don't really have a huge disadvantage the only one disadvantage is that you're, they're younger and if freshmen really try to work harder I think they can really enjoy varsity A sports. Justin is working hard to represent ninth graders in the sport of golf. Tennis, however, has multiple freshmen representing their sport. Sneha Kandi, Lizzie Kong, Amanda Huser, and Isabel Cepeda have all made the girls varsity A team this year. Now, instead of the lineup being all seniors, the freshmen have brought a different dynamic to the group. Our team dynamic is weird. Yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of seniors and a bunch of freshmen, nobody in between. So uh, there is. There's some growing up to do with the freshmen, and, uh, and of course we have a really bunch of mature uh, seniors, so maybe that's not fair to the freshmen, but you know, they're all playing good quality matches against good teams every week. I think um, you know, we're going to be in good shape for the future with all these freshmen next year. I think it's going to be kind of weird when we graduate because there's like two juniors and there's like eight freshmen coming up, so it's a little weird, but I think it brings good dynamic. I think in three years when they're seniors, it's going to be like crazy because they're all going to be on the green team. And, I don't know, I think Mason's going to be number one in the state. Clearly, expectations are high for these freshmen, but only time will tell how they shape their legacy here at Mason High School. I'm Javer Valbar, NBC Sports. <laughs> <laughs>Mason High School. Sure you haven't seen this setup in a while. Two seasons of NBC gone by without the best sports segment in all of broadcasting history. And guess what folks? We bringing it back. Ken, 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 Ken. We're on, we're on camera. We right, gotta right. be professional here. Right. We gotta be professional. Roll it. Oh, Mason with the spike. There it is, Molly. You get it, girl. Number 10, Jared Wesley with the hit. But wait, wait. Play that back one more time. Number five. Check, look at him, look at him. What, what is he doing? You see him? Dalton with, the, with, the, with the spin move. With the spin move. Jack Clark, he's got it. It's in. Next play, Mason Volleyball with the save. Molly Tucker. Save number two. Let's see, can they go for three? Oh, yep, yeah, they got it. Save they number it. three. Save number four. I think they got it again. It doesn't stop. And we can't stop. And we won't stop. Ho, oh, oh. Next play. Jack Clark again. No, not again, Cam. What not an athlete. Again! I'm friends with him. Congratulations to all of our athletes who did make the first edition of Top Fives. But, Ken... With the good, there's always got to be the bad. I think you're right, Cam. Let's go. With the spike. Oh! Save them tatas now. Come on. Matt Stewart. Is that Matt? I, I, is he going to the Naval Academy? He's going to have to get those down for that. Practice, 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 my friend. Come on, Matt. But look, at least he ends it well. Goes he, in for the somersault. He made a little style Stick out it. of it. A little dance out of it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Eric Liddell. <laughs> Oh, right in the nougan. Did they right go in the, the nougan. Did they? Oh, he saves it. He saves it. Karma, how you feel about that? I guess that's what Best student section in the world. Is it, what is did that, that just say? WHS? WHS? I could have sworn we went to MHS. Oh, Nick, Nick, come on now. Up, right. down, no, up, no. down. He's, Nick, he's still off. He's still now, off. now up. And then he, he made it worse with the clap. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Top 5 and Not Top 5. I'm Kendall Haight, and she's Cameron Gunnels. With shows like America's Got Talent, you see some of the most talented and not-so-talented people. But is it possible that there could be a future contestant roaming the halls here at MHS? Well, we wanted to find out and see what secret talents you have in this edition of Kids in the Hall. You see many kids walking through the halls that can play the violin, solve complex math equations, and run fast. But there are also many kids with unique, hidden, and even freakish talents. So we ask you, Kids in the Hall, what's your secret talent? I can make really annoying noises. I'm really good at getting a lady. 
I'm double jointed. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I can moonwalk with my fingers. Uh, I could blow spit bubbles off my tongue, right? No, I think you can I'm looking sexy all the time. Wait. Just farting with my hands? <laughs> like I can like... And then I can get like the eyes. I'm really good at getting the boys. I can make bubble noises. I have a special power that I can talk to cats. I can um, look exactly like a llama. I can tell the weather by grabbing my chest. Thank you. I can be a frog. This is my basketball dance. I got handles, boy. From expert llama impersonators to freaky acts of nature, the halls of MHS are flooded with talented students. They all may not be able to solve intricate mathematical equations or even play in front of thousands of endearing fans, but they are all arguably and uniquely talented in their own special way. I'm Hannah Maxwell, NBC News. Thank you for joining us for this edition of NBC News. For everyone in front of and behind the camera, I'm Caitlin Schott.